What if winter never ended? What if the cold descended on Europe and stayed not for a season, not for a decade, but for hundreds of years? No cozy houses, no warm clothing, no dependable fire. In that world, only one kind of human could endure. Not us, but Neanderthals, the short, powerful, cold-forged people who turned their own bodies into living furnaces. While Homo sapiens fled south, they dived deeper into the blizzards. So, if an endless winter truly arrived, would Neanderthals be the last humans standing? Let's dive into science and uncover the truth hidden. When modern humans look at a Neanderthal skeleton with its wide flaring ribcage, short limbs, compact torso, and powerful face, we often instinctively project onto them the image of a crude and primitive people struggling blindly through the ice. But the more archaeology, genetics, and physiological research accumulate, the more outdated that impression becomes. The Neanderthal body was not the mark of an inferior evolution. It was a finely tuned biological configuration that operated like a complete thermal machine shaped over hundreds of thousands of years to endure the harsh European winters where the mean annual temperature hovered around 43 to 44 degrees Fahrenheit. What we tend to interpret as coarse traits were in fact the optimal answers that natural selection converged on, turning Neanderthals into the only humans who ever possessed what researchers now call hyperpolar morphology. In cold environments, the first ecological rule that governs body shape is Bergman's rule, which states that animals in colder climates tend to have larger body mass and lower surface area relative to volume to limit heat loss. Neanderthals embody this rule perfectly through their barrel-shaped chests and broad pelvises, which expand the internal volume of the body and reduce the ratio of exposed surface area. Their torso worked like a biological heat tank, maintaining stability without wasting energy. The more internal volume a body has, the more it behaves like a sphere and the better it retains heat, much like a large stone that stays warm longer than a thin slab. Their thick necks, strong jaws, and wide backs created a mechanical shield against convective heat loss. Together with this, Allen's rule offers another piece of the puzzle, because animals in cold climates often have shorter limbs to reduce heat loss in the extremities. This is why Neanderthals had notably short forearms and shins compared to their trunk length. Shorter limbs reduce the amount of skin exposed to cold air and therefore limit thermal leakage, forcing warm blood to remain in the core, where vital organs must be protected. This shortening allowed them to preserve heat in the parts of the body that would normally lose it the fastest, such as hands, elbows, and lower legs, while still maintaining strong mobility and impressive endurance. When you place the silhouette of a Neanderthal next to a modern human from a temperate region, the contrast is striking. Modern humans have long limbs, narrow ankles and wrists, and a slim upper body, whereas Neanderthals appear almost like a single compact block of strength, thick, solid, and seemingly engineered to withstand long periods of cold. Another major factor that helped them survive the long winters was their enormous muscle mass. Analyses of Neanderthal bones show that they carried an exceptional amount of lean tissue. Their muscular build was not only for labor or hunting, but acted as a passive insulation system during rest. Muscle tissue accounts for up to 88% of the body's heat production when the body is at rest. Because Neanderthals possessed far more muscle than modern humans, they effectively wore a biological thermal coat made from their own physiology. When they hunted, climbed slopes, or performed any vigorous activity, the heat generated by metabolic processes in their muscles increased dramatically. As a result, even though their short legs made them about 30% less mechanically efficient during locomotion, this inefficiency granted them a thermal advantage. Every step produced heat. They needed less energy for thermoregulation because movement itself became a source of warmth. This also explains why their oxygen and caloric needs were so high. A massive muscular engine requires a steady supply of fuel and oxygen to run smoothly, which leads to deeper adaptations in their respiratory architecture. And this is where one of their most distinctive traits becomes significant. Their large noses and deep, wide rib cages. Older theories propose that the Neanderthal nose evolved primarily to warm freezing air before it reached the lungs. But studies by Ray and colleagues show that their nasal cavities were not disproportionately large when scaled to skull size. 
When corrected for overall cranial dimensions, their nasal structures do not exceed the range found in modern humans living in temperate climates or in large-bodied primates. This means that a large nose is not direct evidence of extreme cold adaptation. What gives the Neanderthal nose real evolutionary meaning is not external temperature, but internal metabolic demand. According to Akebach and other human physiological researchers, Neanderthals had a daily total energy expenditure far higher than contemporary Homo sapiens, simply because their bodies required more fuel to power large muscles and generate heat in cold environments. A body with such high oxygen requirements needs a respiratory pathway that can move huge volumes of air. A large nose, tall nasal vault and expanded sinus system, combined with a ribcage that widens both laterally and anteroposteriorly, created a respiratory engine built to process cold air at extremely high flow rates. Every deep breath they took in the Ice Age air was warmed and humidified quickly, protecting sensitive lung tissue while delivering vast amounts of oxygen to muscles working near their metabolic limits. Their wide ribcage and barrel-shaped torso increased lung volume, allowing them to draw in more oxygen with each breath. This not only supported heat production but also powered their strength and stamina during long-distance hunts and daily physical labor. In an environment where food was scarce and every hunt demanded exceptional endurance, a respiratory system capable of delivering oxygen efficiently was a powerful evolutionary asset. What makes this system remarkable is that it did not function as a passive defense against cold, but as a dynamic partnership between morphology, physiology, and behavior. A wide body conserved heat. Short limbs limited thermal loss. Large muscles generated warmth. A large nose conditioned cold air and a spacious chest supplied the oxygen needed to maintain all of these processes. Everything worked together to support their continuous movement, which in turn sustained their internal heat without relying heavily on active thermoregulation. Anthropologists call this biocultural advantage, the seamless harmony between body structure and lifestyle. When it comes to cold adaptation, morphology is only the outer layer of the story because inside the Neanderthal body operated a network of physiological mechanisms that allowed them to generate and retain heat in environments where the mean annual temperature hovered around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Recent research shows that they did not rely solely on their muscular bulk or compact bodies to prevent heat loss. They also carried a distinct physiological system built for extreme energy expenditure. If their body shape served as a thermal shield, then their internal biology functioned like a constantly running reactor, producing vast amounts of heat to sustain life in a frigid world. One of the most fundamental and fascinating components of this system was their apparent ability to maintain brown adipose tissue into adulthood. In modern humans, brown fat is abundant in infants but declines sharply with age. Yet in animals that hibernate or live in polar environments, this tissue persists because it generates heat quickly and efficiently without the need for muscular shivering. This non-shivering thermogenesis allowed Neanderthals to avoid wasting energy on continuous muscle contractions while warming the blood before it circulated through the rest of the body. The distribution of brown fat seen in infants and cold-adapted mammals around the neck, near the collarbones, around the adrenal glands and along the spine matches remarkably well with what Neanderthals would have needed. As blood passed through the large vessels in the neck and chest, brown fat could rapidly oxidize glucose and fatty acids to produce heat, turning the bloodstream itself into a warm internal river that shielded the core from cold stress. Even a few ounces of brown fat were enough to raise thermal output significantly, meaning a Neanderthal adult could rely on this mechanism throughout the day without resorting to the intense shivering responses typical of modern humans in freezing environments. When combined with their robust musculature, brown fat formed the final thermal barrier that kept them from falling into hypothermia in conditions where ancient Homo sapiens were forced to migrate away. Alongside brown fat was their astonishingly high basal metabolic rate. Because they lived in environments where most calories came from hunting large animals, Neanderthals had to walk long distances, climb steep terrain, track prey across rugged landscapes, and process far more meat than modern humans. This made extreme energy consumption a necessity and produced a physiological system unlike any other in human evolution. Total energy expenditure in winter is estimated to have reached between 3,360 and 4,480 kilocalories per day, far above the requirements of modern foragers. Although these values shifted with region and season, climate reconstructions and isotope data from animal teeth 
show that Neanderthals only expanded into Central Europe during warm phases of the Ice Age, where the mean annual temperature stayed around 43 to 44 degrees Fahrenheit. Even in these comparatively mild phases, their metabolism remained extremely high because their anatomy and lifestyle demanded it. Every step taken across icy ground, every lift of a stone tool or drag of a carcass, every action required for survival produced endogenous heat, turning their entire body into a mobile furnace in a cold landscape. Their heavy reliance on high protein and high fat diets enhance this system even further. Protein has a notably strong thermic effect, meaning the body must increase metabolic activity to break it down. A large meat-rich meal forced their metabolism upward and kept it elevated for hours. This thermal boost could last up to 12 hours after eating, making an evening meal function like a slow-burning internal heater through the long nights. Studies of cold-dwelling modern populations show that protein and fat-rich foods raise internal heat without requiring physical movement, reinforcing the idea that Neanderthals possessed a dual strategy. They ate high-energy meals and used the metabolic heat from digestion to offset external cold. All of these mechanisms had one important consequence. Neanderthals required far more oxygen than modern humans. Their wide ribcage, tall nasal cavity, and broad airway were not simply adaptations to cold, but structural requirements for supplying the enormous oxygen demands of their continuously running metabolic engine. When we look at how Neanderthals survived in the cold landscapes of Pleistocene Europe, what stands out is not only their powerful bodies and high energy physiology, but also their ability to use movement as a thermal tool. They did not simply endure the cold through anatomy. They turned locomotion itself into a form of heat production, merging behavior and biology into a single survival system. As climate cycles shifted and only the warmer interstadials allowed them to move into Central Europe, oxygen isotope data shows that Neanderthals relied heavily on this strategy that we might call movement for survival, in which every action was tied to maintaining internal warmth in harsh conditions. Their short legs played a crucial role. From a modern biomechanical perspective, shorter limbs make walking far less efficient. Neanderthals needed roughly 30% more energy than Homo sapiens to travel the same distance. In a modern context, this would be a disadvantage, but in prolonged cold it became an unexpected asset. The extra energy burned during walking produced additional heat, warming their bodies naturally without needing constant fire or complex clothing. Thermoregulatory models estimate that this heat production could save around 300 kilocalories per day in the energy normally required to keep the body warm. Because their bodies retained heat exceptionally well, each step acted as an investment in survival, not a cost. This tight feedback loop between biology and behavior allowed Neanderthals to move into places where ancient Homo sapiens retreated. Their footsteps were not just movement through space, but thermal regulation in motion, a direct way of turning calories into warmth. Climate evidence from sites like Hilera Avenue confirms that Neanderthals appeared in Central Europe only during warm phases, roughly 43 to 44 degrees Fahrenheit, when mobility mattered most for staying warm and finding food. In these periods, movement became both a survival behavior and a heating mechanism. Their strategies extended beyond locomotion. At night, when fire was not guaranteed, huddling together became a powerful communal adaptation. Sleeping in close contact reduced exposed surface area and trapped pockets of warm air between their bodies, preventing rapid heat loss. Even a few inches of separation in freezing temperatures can drain heat quickly. But together, they created a shared thermal environment capable of sustaining the group through long nights. This behavior, similar to that seen in many cold adapted animals today, shows a level of social intelligence not typically credited to Neanderthals. Clothing and shelter were also part of their fire-free warmth. Even though sewing needles appear much later, cut marks on animal bones show that Neanderthals used hides from reindeer or foxes as cloaks or wraps. These hides, although crude compared to later tailored garments, provided effective insulation when combined with their thick bodies and the constant heat produced by brown fat. They also relied on natural shelters like caves or erected simple windbreaks from branches and bones to create pockets of warmer air. These structures were basic but highly functional, reducing wind chill, one of the most dangerous sources of heat loss. What is striking is that Neanderthals did not always rely on fire. Some cold phase archaeological sites show little or no evidence of repeated burning, suggesting that fire, while useful, was not their primary thermal tool. 
The truth may lie in the fact that their bodies and behaviors formed the core of their thermal survival strategy. Their physiology produced and retained heat so effectively that fire became supplemental rather than essential, used for food preparation or drying hides rather than as a constant necessity. When the main source of warmth came from movement, from body shape, from brown fat working in the neck and chest, Neanderthals could endure even in periods when fire was absent. As we step back and look at the full picture, it becomes clear that Neanderthals were never the crude branch of humanity so often portrayed. If this story has changed the way you see Neanderthals, consider leaving a like so the video can reach others. If you want more people to discover the strength and sophistication of this ancient human lineage, share it. And if you want to continue exploring the deep history of human evolution, make sure to subscribe so you never miss the next chapter.